I want you to try something with me. Without thinking about it, I just want you to say out loud right now the first three fantasy books that come to your mind. You might have said uh, Lord of the Rings, maybe a bit of George R.R. R. Martin, Robert Jordan, and that's fine. Great choices. One more thing though, uh, do me a favor, pop over to Google and try typing in, let's try, uh, most popular fantasy books of all time. What we get, no matter where you look and without fail, are lists of epic tomes and series. Many, many books long and hundreds of pages apiece. Books so thick that they could clap with no hands, if you catch my drift. Ah, no! Books that could take you days or weeks to finish, series that could take you months or years. And that's fine too, in fact that's a staple of the genre that most people, including myself, love. When it comes to epic fantasy, it makes sense to read about a long adventure over a vast and interesting world. A world very unlike our own, with characters that we end up caring about as they grow and change. That's fantasy, that's what makes it special, that's what separates it from romantic dramas or crime thrillers, genres that typically have considerably smaller casts and lower stakes. I'm pointing out the obvious here because I hope you'll hear me out when I say that I want this to change. Kinda? It, uh, it's complicated. There's a specific approach to fantasy storytelling that I think is being completely neglected, and it's an approach that I think could bring a completely fresh experience to the genre. Let me explain. What's shaking? My name's Cam and welcome back to the Story Nomad Inn. I I finally got the Wi-Fi going. It was a it was a total mess around, but I got it working. I know that was something a lot of you were asking for, so feel free to pop on but son of a bit Get off the damn table! Cheeky mother In today's video essay, I want to make a case for why I think fantasy books could and bear with me here, benefit from changing up a bit, and I will explain exactly how. I would love to hear what you think about anything I say in this video, so please do let me know in the comments. I always appreciate the fi- They're on the table again, the co- Here is my hot take. Fantasy as a book genre has boxed itself into requiring long books in long series, focusing around a long, long plot and it didn't need to. Now, I'm well aware that shorter fantasy books exist. Standalones exist. You don't need to start angrily name dropping them in the comments, I know. But remember at the start of the video when I asked you to name three fantasy books? Remember the most popular fantasy book lists that we looked at? I'm confident that most, if not all, were big books that were part of big series. Like I said, that's okay. But here's the problem. We as the consumer have created a situation where this style of storytelling is a requirement. You would be hard pressed to find any well-known publisher that will accept fantasy submissions less than 100,000 words. Because when it comes to fantasy, they think that is the only thing that works. You likely won't find any shorter standalone fantasy books on bestseller lists or at the front of bookstores. And it's a bit of a paradox. Big epic fantasy is clearly the most popular sellers of the fantasy genre but it's also 99% of the genre. At this point you may be thinking, yeah genius, of course epics are the most popular branch of fantasy. Why would we get invested in shorter standalones when instead we can have these sprawling huge plots that take place over an expansive world with lots of world building? But that's kind of it, I'm not talking about standalones. This is gonna seem unrelated, but hear me out. Question, who is the highest selling author of all time. Above Tolkien, above Rowling, above King, is Agatha Christie. And not even by a small amount, by a huge margin. And that might seem a bit odd, at least it seems odd to me because it feels like 9 out of 10 people know who Tolkien is, but I'd be surprised if even 3 out of 10 people could tell you the title of an Agatha Christie book. And the reason isn't that she sold over a billion of just 1 or 2 or even 10 books. You could argue that the reason is that middle-aged to senior-aged women have a concerning fascination with sexy murder, but truthfully the numbers boil down to her more than 80 publications. An enormous portion of those books are detective serials with recurring characters, most notably the ever-inquisitive Hercule Poirot. Fans tuned in story by story to see the same character confront a different problem. That's what I'm talking about here. Serials. 
You might also know it as the Monster of the Week formula. You'll know it best when it comes to TV shows like Doctor Who or X-Files. There might be a greater, higher stakes story in the background, but the immediate focus is usually on the smaller crisis. A crisis contained to that one episode. And this doesn't just work for TV, think the Sherlock Holmes stories. It also doesn't just work for crime mysteries, think the Witcher or Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or I don't know, held the entire comic book industry. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this now. In a nutshell, I think fantasy could absolutely benefit from smaller, more episodic or self-contained books, even if those self-contained adventures do somehow tie together in a larger plot. Last year I reread Del Toro Quest. I have a whole video going in depth about that fantastic series if you want to check that out. A lot of you might remember that series very fondly, it was the first fantasy series that a lot of us ever read. But basically it's a middle grade fantasy series that takes a huge high stakes plot and breaks it down into semi-self-contained stories. Books sitting at only around 20 to 30,000 words, much lower than the 100k that we were talking about before, and I know that seems like it makes sense because it's middle grade, but in rereading those stories, I kind of realized just how easily that could work for adult fantasy as well. I'm talking about books only 30,000 words long. Uh, Del Toro Quest. So the heroes need to collect gems for a magic belt. Each book focuses on an individual gem with its own unique antagonist. After rereading this series, I couldn't help but want something similar in adult fantasy. That actually led me to realizing that the reason I love The Witcher so much, the reason I love The Witcher maybe more than most other fantasies, is because we follow Geralt through so many self-contained adventures. While the genre and the stories themselves may seem completely different, the structure isn't too far removed from Agatha Christie's detective novels, or the serial style of storytelling in general. Uh, so I want to give you another example of what I mean, uh, but in order to do so I kind of have to, I have to talk about myself for a minute. I know, ew. I promise I'm not just saying this to like self-promote or polish my own flute, but I am actually a writer myself, and reflecting on all of this kind of inspired me to start my own fantasy series that will consist of shorter books that focus on a more self-contained story for each book. As of right now, it's about two men that will essentially work as blades for hire, whether that be solving a mystery, killing monsters, pulling off a heist, and it all takes place in this entirely fictional fantasy world. The first book starts with a prison break. Now, right away you'll probably realize that this type of story I've just described lends itself really well to the Monster of the Week style. In one short book, they could be doing a bank heist. In the next, they could be hunting down a serial killer in this fantasy world. You'll probably also notice how inspired it might seem by The Witcher, and that's not a coincidence. I, again, that is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. But if I can be so bold, I can promise you it will be dramatically different in regards to the world, the stories, and the characters. Uh, again, I'm not telling you about this project in the hopes that you'll smack my ass and say good job. I just wanted to give you a very specific idea of how I think serials could work in fantasy. And I also want to put my money where my mouth is. This is the type of fantasy I want to read, so why not write some of it myself? I'm well aware that serialized fantasy does exist, but it's far from popular and I think most fantasy fans could go their whole lives without ever reading one. No one's talking about them, so publishers think no one's interested. But I think the problem is that just not enough people know this can work in fantasy. Imagine being able to pick up any book in a particular fantasy series without having to have read the others. Maybe that one specific book in the series that everyone recommends. Imagine being able to pick it up and read it without being so lost that you can't enjoy the story. Imagine a fantasy series where a new book comes out every couple of months instead of years. What? Imagine a fantasy series where you can pick up a book, sit down, and read the whole thing before dinner. What the fuck is that? And know that there's still plenty more to come. Being able to read about and grow attached to the same characters as they have countless adventures through an enormous fantasy world. That is what serials could do for this genre. I'm not saying I dislike epic doorstopper fantasy, or that I want them to stop by any means. I just think that we could all benefit from something that feels new and fresh. 
not just a fresh story, but a fresh way of telling the story. I think it could work, uh, but if it does, it would need to have the trust of readers like us, and ultimately the trust of publishers too. I'm not crying, I just had a cough attack. Uh, as I was saying, ironically, when it comes to publishers putting their trust in serial fantasies like this, serials have been proven to be one of the most lucrative forms of storytelling. Again, Agatha Christie is the highest selling author of all time, or at the very least she's tied with Shakespeare. The Shakespeare, like actual <laughs> literal Shakespeare. But hey, uh, what do you think? Could you see yourself getting into a fantasy series if the books and the stakes were much smaller? Do you think that you can do fantasy world building in so few pages? That's a very fair concern, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, especially for watching through the whole video. You are my favorite. I make videos every single week on fantasy and horror books, so if that's your kind of thing, if you're a reader like myself, then I would love it if you stuck around. I have to go kick some hobbits out of my inn, um, so I'll leave it here, but hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.